clear you won. And then they gave it the draw. <laughs> that was bullshit. Yeah. So welcome you guys. Welcome you guys for listening. Um, this is my first podcast and the 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 person that we invited the first time is no other than one of the biggest legends we have in kickboxing. It's uh, a guy that I was looking up to, uh, especially when I was fighting. I was looking up to him. Um, he comes from the same country uh, as I was born. This is no other than one of the biggest legends, like I said, Ernesto Host. Ernesto Host, welcome. Welcome to my first podcast and welcome for attending. Thank you. Um, how have you been doing the, lately? Uh, trying to hold up, of course, like everybody. Um, COVID uh, doesn't make it uh, easy for uh, for nobody. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, hanging in there and uh, yeah, like you, uh, I'm preparing for uh, for a fight. <laughs> on, uh, I'm sure you're gonna bring that topic on uh, later. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing right now and. Uh, Taking care of my children. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got you got three lovely uh, kids. Uh, mm -hmm. One is Reggie. One is Louise. Am I pronouncing Louise? Am I pronouncing it right? And and Diego. How mm. have them? Uh, they been doing? They're doing good. Yeah. Uh, studying. They are getting uh, big right now. Yeah. Reggie is uh, is twenty three, getting twenty four. Uh, Louis is twenty one. Mm -hmm. uh, Diego is uh, fifteen. Yeah. Uh, they uh, developing themselves as uh, as fine human beings, and mm -hmm. I'm very proud of them. Do we uh, is one of these kids uh, doing kickboxing? Following my steps? Yeah. No. No. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, Reggie's playing tennis. Uh, Lois is uh, dancing, and uh, Diego's playing football or soccer, however you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. And that's okay for me, you know. I I never uh, wanted them, especially to to follow my steps. Mm -hmm. They have to follow their own steps. Is is there any reason for that? I mean, um, I I have the same thought, you know, that I don't want my kids to follow my step in the fighting sport because mm -hmm. um, it's 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 a tough sport. It's hard, hard working, and um, I already told them if you want to make the step to you know, um, f the, doing the fighting fight sport, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But if you rather do something else, I'll be I'll be happy. You know, to 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 tell you to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I never had that talk with my kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, my my oldest son, he came at some point. Uh, he said, "Yeah, Dad, uh, I have your genes, so maybe uh, I can become a big champion like you." I said, "You know." If you want to try, it's okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, it's also okay. Yeah. And he didn't like it as much as I did. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, then don't do it. Yeah. You just do it. He's playing tennis. He was playing football. And tennis is... Uh, yeah, he loves tennis. So yeah. that's, that's okay for sport. me. Yeah. Yeah. And Esto, um, you're from Suriname. Mm -hmm. um, I was also born in, in, in Suriname. Mm -hmm. um, great country. Mm -hmm. Can you Can you tell me one thing? Um, a lot of people uh, ask me that question also. Mm -hmm. How does it come that so many good athletes come from Suriname? It's such a small country, f um, little more than 600,000 people are living there, mm -hmm. but you have soccer players, you have kickboxers, you have a lot of good athletes coming from Suriname. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me something about it? I don't know, maybe it's the food uh, they get <laughs> or, or I hey, don't hey, know. Hey. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the homegrown food or, or something. Uh, but yeah, it it is it is not a great, not a big country. But if you look at all the athletes that come from from Suriname, that's that there are a lot. And um, um, even uh, the national uh, football team, soccer team, uh, is doing very good right yeah. now. And maybe uh, they will have a chance to uh, to go to the to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that makes me very proud, of course. Yeah. Uh, I was a lot of in contact with uh, with, the tr with the coach, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. 
something in our genes or something uh, that makes us uh, very proud yeah. and very strong. Strong people are coming from uh, from Suriname. You mm -hmm. know, you are uh, Timers Pong and a, a lot of great fighters coming from from Suriname. Also, mm -hmm. the soccer players. Mm -hmm. You know, half of the Dutch national team is, you know, coming from Suriname. That's yeah. uh, so we are proud. We are really proud. And yeah. uh, let's get back to your 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 fighting career. Mm -hmm. uh, you were training at uh, Vos Gym. Uh, you didn't start there, but you were training at Vos Gym. And your trainer was Johan Foss. Are you mm -hmm. still contact, uh, in contact with him? No. Oh. No, um, uh, I haven't uh, had uh, contact with him for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, a lot of things happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out... Uh, that made me decide uh, to, to stop uh, training with him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I started to do it, uh, to, to follow my own path. Yeah, yeah, you followed your own path, um, working a lot of years with him because you have a, a, it, it's, it's a tremendous list of being champion. I, I, I have it on paper. You've been Dutch champion, you've been multiple times European champion, multiple times world champion. You know, you won the K2, you know, twice. That's such a long list. And, when, of course, not forgetting the K1 titles. Mm -hmm. uh, which one of, you know, these titles are you most proud of? Um, the most proud of, uh, the most proud I am uh, at the K1 Grand Prix 1999. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, because um, I was a champion in 97, mm -hmm. and then 98 was not so good. I became sick. I had problem with my skin yeah. for four years already. And uh, you've been I having that for your whole career. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I fought in, in in 98, but I was not strong enough, so I lost. Yeah. Then I was supposed to come back in 99. And in 99, my first fight uh, with Francisco Filio, very strong a Brazilian Yeah, he fighter. is. Um, he knocked me out uh, very hard. Mm -hmm. And I cannot remember getting out of the ring. Uh, uh, probably I asked a lot of times what happened. I can only remember from one time that I asked what happened. And then my trainer said, you got knocked out. And uh, so getting into the ring, I cannot remember. Yeah, I can remember getting into the ring. I can remember uh, the beginning of the fight. Uh, and then I cannot remember getting out of the ring mm -hmm. and everything. And uh, so, um, so I was doubting myself uh, uh, if I was good enough still. Mm -hmm. uh, five days later, my daughter was born. So that was that was a relief. I didn't have to think about um, the knockout. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was very positive for me. And um, then basically uh, after that, and that was that was in the time that uh, there were no podcasts, there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook. Um, and then I got a lot of questions uh, by Japanese press, yeah, by email. Uh, and emails and the, the questions were quite negative uh, like uh, are you too old I was 33 then uh, are the other fighters too good shouldn't you stop those wow. kind of things and I remember that after the fight they interviewed me also and I say uh, I cannot remember how, that, how I got out of the ring so maybe it's time to stop yeah um, um, but when I got those questions, I got kind of, I became kind of angry and I was like, okay, um, if you guys think I'm going to stop, I'm not going to stop. You got motivated? Yeah, it motivated me. Mm. And, uh, so, uh, at the end of the year, uh, I was, cha I became champion again <laughs> and against all odds. That's the sweetest revenge. 
yeah, most of the <laughs> most most of was it was revenge on myself mm -hmm. because I made some mistakes uh, before the fight uh, I did with Filio. I didn't pay atten enough attention. I beat Filio one time. I know he was very strong because mm. he was knocking everybody out. Yeah. But uh, I was like, no, that's not gonna happen to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I yeah, uh, underestimated him. So he paid me. I, I, I got paid the the bill for that. Yeah. And um, so that made that also made me be aware, more aware of what I was what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And made me uh, think that if I um, approach my fight, my 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 sport like this, it's gonna be a dangerous sport for me because then uh, people will be very motivated to f to fight with me. And if I'm not that motivated, then I have a problem. Um, so that made that I didn't lose a fight for three and a half years after that. Great. And um, yeah, I became a, f a champion a few times more. Yeah, you did, you did, and you know you you are a big inspiration for a lot of uh, other fighters, and and um, also for myself. You know, I I was looking at those fights when when uh, when I was still young because you were um, because I wanted to be one of the K1 fighters also, and that was only my step to just become a K1 fighter. I never knew that I was uh, uh, become a K1 champion also. So I was happy about that, you know, to see you fighting and also Peter Arch uh, fighting. Uh, you guys were a big inspiration for me, like I said. Um, I, I I was looking at your record, mm -hmm. and you had 99 uh, wins on your record. I, I was checking out your 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 um, website, and I saw you have 99 wins. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at the 100? Is the 100 coming? Actually, I thought it was 100, and then... I never really counted them, uh, and and then I later it saw I saw it was ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I remember my my last fight I fought with Peter Arts, and I thought it was number hundred. Yeah, and, and I told the people yeah, it's my hundred uh, victory, and then later it said ninety nine. Okay, I never really checked it if they missed one fight or something. It's it's okay for me. Basically, uh, the one hundred is not that important for me. Mm. Now, I like the I like the <laughs> I like the figure ninety nine also. So it's nice. It's it's you know, it's one of, it's I believe also is one of the best figures because, you know, someone else has also ninety nine wins. You know who? No, I have nine nine wins. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. oh, ninety nine wins. I was I was checking it and I was like, hey, I also have ninety nine wins. You have of course okay. a lot more fight fights than than I have, but. Mm. Uh, I also have 99. So that means that I have more losses. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying you that. You say, have, you, have not, you have more fights, you tell me? No, but maybe so, all the other fights are draws. <laughs> no, I had, I, had, I had one draw. Uh -huh. I have had one draw with Sam Schild. Yeah. It basically, I think he won, but they gave it a draw. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that... Uh, I don't like draws. Mm -hmm. Draws is basically, I think draws is bullshit. Yeah. I mean, you can always. They should determine. There's, there's the, always, there are always a better fighter. Uh, they should terminate all the draws. In my opinion, yes. Mm -hmm. in, in fight sport, yes. Yeah, no draws. Yeah. There was only one winner or one loser. That's, that's I think, is the best. Uh, may, maybe it's an idea. May, you know, maybe it's an idea for all the organizations to take away the, the draws because. Well, you know, it 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 was it was good for K one, for example, to do extra rounds. Yeah, you know, there just, should be a winner just to decide uh, who's gonna win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you do you also think back at at these great moments in the K one, the K one period? Do you sometimes I you know I um, I follow you on Instagram. Sometimes I see a picture or I see some of these other fighters, and I think back on these great great moments in the K one. Do you think back? Yeah, of course. That's that's. I think everybody does, mm -hmm. and especially the good times, but also the bad times, um, because uh, I think uh, sometimes bad times make good times. Mm -hmm. Bad times make you realize you have to do things differently. Like I told you about the '99. Um, so uh, I like I like to. To go back sometimes and to uh, 
think about uh, how things went, and um, and sometimes I think, okay, uh, that part I could have done better, mm -hmm. and also that part I did very good, and yeah, I will always uh, go back in time for that. Yeah, do you miss it? Do you miss the magical moments in, let's say, Tokyo Dome, mm. Osaka Superdome? You know, do you miss those moments? No, you don't miss them. No, just I don't miss just them. to no, I mean. Not just to be in the ring, but just to be there and getting all the respect from all the fans. I like to think about it. I like to remember it, but I don't miss them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it it's a part. I've been it it was a part of my life, and I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But um, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know that that's. I mean, there are other parts. I I enjoy my children, for example. Yeah. Uh, being with my children and mm -hmm. there are other things uh, so those moments I don't miss mm -hmm. but I'm happy I ex experienced them yeah yeah I can understand um, for the people that, that don't know that we also had uh, a clash in 2004 mm -hmm. uh, we fought uh, against each other yeah um, I believe you had a, a different opinion about the outcome of the fight you know, you don't believe, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. but I have to, I have to, uh, you know, tell the audience about it. Yeah. But, well, you know. Yeah, for me, it was, of course, uh, the year before uh, you became champion and uh, uh, I was sick. Uh, I couldn't fight. Um, um, and then we were supposed to fight, I think, uh, few months later yeah I'm not sure why it, it, it was four months after my champ uh, three months after my championship they asked me to fight uh, against you yeah. and then oh, I had a, decided not to do it no I had a back injury oh okay. yeah yeah okay well you know that's okay and then later we met in the in the k1 uh, Grand Prix the first round we had to fight each other yeah. uh, in the uh, at the drawing we were the last two fighters mm -hmm. so we had no choice to uh, to but fighting each other um and that fight yeah was a pretty even fight in my opinion mm -hmm. um before that extra round uh in my opinion i won that round uh in your opponent opinion you won that round mm -hmm. and uh, i still think that it's not about you not at all uh and i was not angry with you or something not at all i was angry with k1 mm -hmm. because uh, i know uh, and and the, I mean, um, uh, the year before you fought with the Musashi in the final, and Musashi did quite good, but not enough. Mm. Uh, I did also good. Yeah, yeah. No. I mean, yeah. Sorry, no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, yeah. I mean, Musashi did quite good. Yeah. Uh, because I, I say Musashi did quite good, and I, I should uh, explain why. Because basically. Uh, Musashi was not that good, yeah. Uh, but he was Japanese, yeah. so they needed a Japanese hero. And uh, I remember that I fought with Musashi. I fought Musashi two times. The first time he had no chance at all, I knocked him out. And the second time, they uh, they did the fight a little bit high in the in the mountains, mm -hmm. and uh, Musashi was there for a, for a, for a while. And I came mm. there one one day before I had to do all kinds of things in Tokyo, and then one day before I went to that that place and uh, and um, um, then when I was was uh, doing the warming up, I I felt like I couldn't hardly breathe. Yeah. You know? So we did the fight. It was at the five rounds time, five rounds, and then he hit me on my liver one time, and um, but after the second round, basically. I felt I was getting tired. All the stamina was gone. Not all the stamina, but that, that was getting tired. More yeah. tired than, than normal. Than normal, yeah. And then he hit me on my liver. So then it was, I nearly won that fight. Um, and they were like, okay, uh, Musashi did very good. And we're going to bring Musashi, we're going to we're gonna lift Musashi and, 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 and boost him and uh, make sure that, uh, that we can... Uh, maybe give, make him champion mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Musashi is a nice guy I like him very yeah. lot I, I meet him uh, many times uh, in Japan uh, uh, but he's not good enough mm -hmm. and um, so uh, when we fought 
uh, that's what that what people told me later. Uh, they wanted you to win uh, because the year before Musashi did quite good with you, mm-hmm. quite good, not good enough. So that uh, they would ha- really give him a, wanted to give him a chance to become champion. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see when because when he fought with you, you clearly won the fight after three rounds. Yeah. You clearly won the fight mm-hmm. because you gave him a knockdown. I remember yeah. you gave him a knockdown, a yeah. kick or something. A punch, a punch, punch, a punch, yeah. a punch, a punch, a punch. Straight punch. A straight punch? Yeah. So you basically win the fight because when you, when you uh, give somebody an eight count, it means it's that ten, eight. Yeah. it's like a 10 eight round. Yeah. Normally it's 10 10 round. And the other, the other rounds you won also. Mm-hmm. At least one round you won. So it was. It was clear. It was clear you won. Yeah. And then they gave it a draw. <laughs> that was bullshit. Yeah. And um, and then after that, again. And a draw. after that, <laughs> again a draw. Yeah. And then and and then and then and then, and uh, for the last round, so the, a decision had to come. And I remember they waited very long. Yeah. I were they were like, I'm sure they were like, we want Musashi to win. No, he must win. Yeah, but he cannot because Rainy won. <laughs> I'm sure it's something like, like that happened. And um, and at last, uh, you won the fight. Uh, you won the tournament. And uh, I remember I went I went to you. I said, um, Rainy, uh, uh, congratulations. You won the fight. I don't think you you beat me, but um, you did the rest. You did very good. Mm-hmm. Also with the South African guy, uh, Francois uh, Bota. Francois Bota. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, so uh, it was nothing against you, never. But uh, I had, a, especially at uh, to, towards K one, I had a, I had a bad feeling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can understand. I yeah. can really understand your yeah. your feelings about that because some fights in the K one were um, controversial. I mean, the outcome of the fight were controversial. You know, Not fixed. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, think, think, thinking back of of, of K one. Uh, what went through your mind when K1 got bankrupt? Yeah, I was I was uh, sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, K1 gave me you a lot of fighters gave gave us a lot. Yeah. So when they went back bankrupt, yeah, that was it. I mean, everybody felt it. Everybody. In the fight world, mm-hmm. in, the, in the in the especially the kickboxing world, yeah, everybody felt that something was missing, and and still, if you realize, people still talk about K one rules, K one rules, and uh, um, so that means that K one had a very big impact on in the fight sport uh, in general. Uh, so yeah, that will always be missed. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, and I think that if they would have done things properly, K1 would still be there. Mm-hmm. But the, the 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 important thing, like like I said before, like how you beat Musashi, they really needed the K1 champion from Japan because J- K1 was basically Japanese sport. Yeah. And, uh, and we came in as Dutch guys. We came in as time. Dutch guys from a small country and beating uh, everybody <laughs> up and everything. That's why they tried also tried to, to bring it to America because if K1 would have had an American champion, it would have been very good also. And I think K1 would still exist. I think so. Also. Yeah. yeah, they tried. They tried, uh, yeah. you know, but yeah. they didn't succeed. I Yeah, too bad. Yeah, it was too bad. It, it, it should have been very good if, if, a, if a Japanese uh, fighter would have won uh, K1. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm. I agree with you. You know, if 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 a Japanese fighters would have uh, won, doing better, mm-hmm. we could see it in the K1 Max. You know, yeah. when when one of the um, K1 Masato. Max, uh, Masato won the the the, the, the K1, it mm-hmm. was getting popular. Uh, yeah. Not maybe not as popular as the heavyweight, but it was getting popular. You know, and 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 yeah, it, 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 I think in Japan it was maybe more popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, throughout the world, the heavyweights were popular. Throughout but the world, no, mm-hmm. but but in Japan, uh, yeah, uh, they were happy they had a K1 champion. Yeah, even was it was it in in the lighter weights. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and then let's let's move on. Let's move on to uh, you know to all the other fighters like 
like like uh, Peter Art. You still mm. see them, Sam Shield. You, yeah. Mm. Yeah, sometimes we meet. We were uh, at the demonstration uh, to get the, the, the gyms open again. Uh, and then Peter and Sam were also there. Mm -hmm. How are they doing? Yeah, I think they are okay. Mm -hmm. Peter and sometimes meet. We uh, we did... Uh, after we, we fought... Uh, we fought six times. Uh, and after our last fight, uh, Peter wanted to work together. Uh, so we decided to do a seminar mm -hmm. together, and it was quite a success. Mm -hmm. and after that seminar, it was in, in my home uh, hometown uh, Horen. Yeah, um, we got uh, we asked uh, we were asked to do other seminars in f outside Holland. Uh, so, for example, there was uh, uh, we did a few in Bulgaria uh, with a very rich guy who is very uh, much in love with, with fight sport and who organizes uh, events there. And uh, so we were asked to do uh, seminars mm -hmm. over there. So, yeah. Uh, Great connection between two legends. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mm -hmm. mean, I mean, throughout the years, you have, to, you have to know that the first time we fought, we fought each other the first time in 1988, and the last time we fought in 2014, it's 26 <laughs> years. Wow. 26 years uh, we meet each other in the ring. Um, and that's that's so special, you know? You, yeah, you guys fought six times, yeah. uh, beating each other up in the ring, mm -hmm. and then after all the after the career and then working together. That is yeah. that is special. That I is think special. that is really, really also special. also what is also special is that we we can meet, we can accidentally meet each other in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. You know, we met, yeah, we met uh, in, in, in Tokyo in a, in a club uh, after uh, we did our work, we went to a club and then I met met him there. You yeah. Know? And that is crazy. I mean, you both live in Holland, not close to each other. So we will never meet each other just like that in Ho in Holland. But we meet, we meet each other just like that in, in Tokyo. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Nice to hear that. Nice to hear that. Um, can you tell me something about, because we are talking about Peter, we're talking about you, we're talking about, you know, Sam Shield, mm -hmm. um, of course, myself. Mm -hmm. How come that the heavyweights, the big heavyweights, strong heavyweights come from such a small nation? Like I, uh, like the first question that I ask you, one of the first questions that I ask you about Suriname. You know, a lot of athletes come from Suriname and now we have a such a small country, also like mm -hmm. uh, Holland, 17 million people. Uh, and we have s so many good kickboxers over here, mm -hmm. you know, heavyweight kickboxers. Is it the water? Is it the meat? Is it the flowers? Can you tell me something about that? What I think, when kickboxing came to Holland, it was around 1975, I think, uh, they started to do to to organize events, and then there were, of course the, the first events must have been very horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, yeah, I mean the fighters uh, didn't know what to do, but um, they were willing to fight. They were, most of the guys were from from karate karate background, uh, but then the 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 the, the interest uh, was brought up to uh, to the people so more and more people started to do kickboxing mm -hmm. since Holland is a small country uh, if you have to go from northwest to southeast yeah it maybe takes three hours yeah if you do it in America or you do it in Japan or in another big country it is it will cost a lot of money yeah to take a, f uh, a flight or something to, to do those, those kind of things and Holland is small so it is easy to to bring uh, all the talents uh, together some some fighters together to do to do an event mm -hmm. and as though you had well like you said you have 99 fights wins. 99 99 wins i'm sorry 99 wins mm -hmm. uh you're not especially looking for that 100 you're not especially looking for that 100 but when i say may 8th mm -hmm. uh 2021 what mm -hmm. do you say there's a big chance that I uh, can uh, make uh, the the round figure. <laughs> yeah. 
Why? Tell me why. Um, you you decided to you know stop fighting, mm -hmm. and then the promoter came came along and says, "Hey, I'm organizing um, uh, a K1 event, K1 Legends. Mm -hmm. He's um, you know inviting all the K1 Legends, some of the K1 Legends. You know you, um, Peter, and a couple more, Labanner. Yes, you know, Leiko." Why would you agree to say yes? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. You're 55 now. Mm -hmm. Why would you say yes? Um, I'm not asking this in a ne negative way. What? Why? Once a fighter, always a fighter. Mm -hmm. that's, that's first of all. Uh, you're being asked to do uh, an event like this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, your fighter's heart uh, is started to grow again. Um, that's basically uh, the reason. Uh, second of all, uh, like everybody in COVID time, we didn't make so much money, uh, so it's 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 a chance to make some extra money. But mm -hmm. it's, it's not the most important reason. The, the fighter's hardest is yeah the is challenge, the challenge, mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, to do your thing again. It, I mean, it's the nicest work I have done in my life. Um, yeah. I, I did a lot of not a lot of work but uh, but I, I but that's nothing that comes close to uh, the thing I love the most mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's fighting so if I got a chance to do it uh, to show my my skills again yes uh, it was not such a difficult uh, uh, question for me okay because I, I, I got the answer and I, I have a different problem uh, with my eye, my right eye. I had um, retina detachment. So for me, it was already I said, okay, he was asking me. I didn't even ask about the money. I said, okay, I'm not fighting. You know, I've I've had that uh, that problem in the beginning when I, um, beginning of my career, um, before I fought the, the 2003 K1 uh, championship, I already had that problem. You know, got operated, and the doctor said, "Hey, Remy, you cannot fight. You know, you cannot fight. Uh, you cannot fight anymore. Uh, your, your, your career ends here." So I said, "Hey, but what do I do then?" You know, I said, "Okay, no. Give me a couple of weeks, and I'll be uh, on my feet again to to fight." And then he said, "No, you don't understand. You cannot fight anymore." So I was just knocking at the door of K1, and so I said, "No, I'm gonna still keep on fighting." So I had. Four operations after that. No, three operations after that one. So I had a uh, total of four operations in my whole career. Mm -hmm. So that's what I said. No, I'm not taking a chance anymore. You know, I've, I've, I've took some chances and I got out uh, good because I can still see 80% with my right eye. And that's, that's enough. So that's why I'm not fighting. Um, but there are still other uh, fighters like Jerome LeBonner, Stefan Leko are still going to attend at that uh, event. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think about that? What, what do you think about other fighters that coming back from uh, the leave and then they come back to the to the gym? Uh, I mean to the ring. Yeah, well, I I, I think uh, let let's say uh, it's COVID time. Like I already said, uh, not everybody's making uh, money, uh, and then this is a chance, and this is something that if you are a fighter, you love it. Mm -hmm. um, is is this gonna be an exhibition fight or a real fight? No, real fight. It's gonna be a real fight. I don't do exhibitions. Oh. <laughs> I, I I thought I heard because I I thought I heard from the promoter uh, when he called me. He said, "No, Remy, don't worry. It's gonna be a exhibition fight, light sparring, this and that. So it's not gonna be an exhibition he, fight." He never told me that. <laughs> Wow. So <laughs> I, I don't assume, but I will give him a call to be sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> call him. Because uh, because I, I, I know your opponent. I, I know your opponent. There's Breeze Guidon. Breeze Guidon, uh, we, 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 we. he was training at Majiran Gym. Majiro. You know, yeah. uh, he, he lived with me one time also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know how he is? A little, yeah. Okay, okay. So you, can't get, you could get knockout or it's going to be a real fight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you feel that your your honor is gonna be on the line? Your honor. 
No. Mm-hmm. No, of course, uh, you want to win. Yeah, but do you think you can, you know, you're, you're of course, one of the biggest legends in kickboxing mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. You're fighting against Breeze Gidon with all due respect. If you lose that fight, are you going to feel bad about it? Of course, I'm, I, of course, you're gonna be, feel bad about it. But yeah. does it does it break your, you know, something between your ear? I don't know. I'm not there yet, so I, I cannot say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I know that uh, um, I'm up for the fight, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm already preparing for that fight, and. Uh, You can win, you can lose. Yeah, you know. So uh, it's not that I take it lightly mm-hmm. because I want to win. Yeah, but uh, if I would lose, I would accept it. You know that it, it it's okay. And then and and also the matter the the way how if I get knocked out, let's say I get knocked out in the first round uh, without any chance, mm-hmm. then I know I I I should never do this again. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm preparing. I'm training hard, and I uh, try to uh, to uh, make the best of it. And yeah, I'm not like uh, boasting like, "Oh, I'm gonna win and I'm gonna knock him out." Again. He's gonna do that, you know. That's <laughs> no trash talk. <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm I'm too old for that shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and it's let, let how, the how's the how's how's the no problem. how's the preparation uh, progressing? Any injury yeah. because you're. You know, you're not 25 anymore. Does the the body, you know, does it flow? Does it of course you're gonna feel you're gonna feel some things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have a, a good uh, a team behind me, mm-hmm. people who, uh, who work with my injuries if I have injuries, and uh, yeah, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, um, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, you know, when I say you see. One FC, Glory, K1. Nowadays, what do you say? Then I say K1 is history. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, UFC did a lot better mm-hmm. uh, because UFC and K1 started the same year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was asked to fight in the first UFC. It was wow. like half a year after K1. Mm-hmm. And they asked me if I uh, would would do that fight. It was bare hand, uh, hardly no rules. Yeah, uh, because you get, can get headbutts and all that. I've I've seen I before. Don't know if, I don't know if it was also headbutts, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I, for me it was now. This is bullshit. <laughs> it's not for me, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Another guy from the gym went, and uh, it was a tournament then, in the beginning. So he came into the final, then he lost in the final. Um, and then they did a few uh, tournaments like that, and then later they they came with uh, with uh, with the one matches. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people liked liked the syst- the, 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 the 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 UFC system, but they they didn't like the fact that. They were fighting with bare hands, mm-hmm. so they developed uh, the, the UFC gloves, small gloves, yeah. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, when the Fertitta brothers uh, took over, and then Dana White came in, uh, uh, because in the be- I remember in the beginning it was and it's still not uh, allowed to do it in all the states in America, mm-hmm. but uh, when they came in and they changed something in the rules and everything. Uh, The cage was uh, more professional and everything. Then suddenly, uh, yeah, it took it, off. Yeah, it took off. It uh, was allowed in more states, and it was getting was getting more and more popular on TV yeah. and everything. And uh, yeah, if you see what it, what they, what it is now, I think they sold it for a few billion uh, yeah, dollars. Four. Yeah, uh, And yeah. Well, they bought it for I don't know. Basically, <laughs> basically, I think ten million. Small change. <laughs> yeah. Comparing. Yeah. Comparing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I think they did very well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met the I met the guys because I was uh, I I was training a guy who was uh, fighting in UFC. So I, I met all the guys and 
And I was surprised because they know exactly, maybe not surprised, but it was nice to see they mm-hmm. know exactly who I am and uh, what I have done. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and looking at what, what UFC is now, then I think... Uh, they That's the very, place where very, no, they did K1 a very good should job. have been. I don't know if K1 should have been there because the big difference between K1 and UFC is K1 is Japanese and UFC is American. Yeah. And basically when you look at all the all the 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 I say that uh, the entertainment business not especially especially the entertainment if all, all the business from 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 Japan uh that that got big, all the Sony, Yamaha, uh, you 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 name it, name you it. know. Uh, you should think that they would be able also to bring to the fight global. sport so yeah. big, yeah. but uh, yeah, they made too many mistakes at K1, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's where I think uh, uh, a club like UFC took over. Yeah. Yeah, let's 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 look at uh, Glory. Um, mm-hmm. Glory started somewhere in 2012, I believe, mm-hmm. and they they make some steps. They made some steps. Even mm-hmm. I fought uh, a couple of times in Glory. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at the heavyweights right now, what do you think about that? Um, well, what I think is uh, it is not like. Uh, the the glory days of K1. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's different, of course. Uh, K1 was a different system, and K1 was once a year uh, a tournament uh, final for the, yeah. for the for the for the eight uh, best fighters of that year. Uh, nowadays, uh, sometimes they do tournaments, mm-hmm. uh, but basically it's like. Uh, one matches do they have to bring him back the eight the uh, the eight best fighters mm, tournament not especially but um i do think um that that in the k1 period uh everybody was looking up to that everybody yeah. was looking <laughs> up to december november december it when, was like christmas final, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly when the final was coming and and something like this uh, yeah, uh, glory cannot bring that, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know. One FC, uh, of course, they also have uh, some some heavyweight fighters and some a lot of fighters. Uh, up till now, I don't know how they do it mm-hmm. uh, because uh, there are not that many now. There are no spectators. Maybe they sell it in in Asia. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the way they make money, I cannot see even for glory. I mean, I mean, um, I know they do pay per view and they they sell pay per view. Uh, but pay per view is, in my opinion, something really uh, what what is really working in America. Yeah, it's working in the states, but but in Europe or in other countries, we're not used to it yet. It, it's no people don't want to pay extra for uh, to, to watch a fight mm. do, do you think that the level of heavyweights is um were we in the k1 area uh, era that good or are they less good in this era no i don't think i don't think could uh, uh, could they, the fighters, come, the they fighters, come to the this fighters, level the fighters in k1 era were not that good mm-hmm. there were a few very good fighters mm-hmm. let's say maybe I think not even 10. Mm-hmm. The rest was not so good. Mm-hmm. Okay, but let's talk about the 10, the 10 good ones. Mm-hmm. And lo- let's look at the 10 best one of Glory right now. Mm-hmm. Is it at the same level? Maybe not, but it, it, it's uh, still hard to say, hard to compare. Uh, because a lot of people are comparing that. Uh, I always say yeah. you cannot you know, compare uh, Muhammad Ali to Mike Tyson. You know, they were... Uh, completely different fighters but it's an, another era you know you cannot com, uh, compare that that's what I always say but what I say is that the the, 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 the sport develops mm-hmm. and uh, the things you could do 20 years ago or 30 years ago you cannot do that right now anymore uh, mm-hmm. uh, f- if you already look 
at, for example, from the moment K1 came, mm-hmm. uh, the fighters became professional. Yeah. Before that, they were semi-professional. Mm-hmm. They were working. A uh, lot of lot of lot of fighters were bouncer. Yeah. They were working at night in, in, in nightclub in, in training training in uh, in uh, by the day. And now things are so much different mm-hmm. because, uh, yeah, fighters train uh, two or three times a day. Yeah, yeah. So the level has gone up, but with everybody, mm-hmm. everybody who had a chance to to train hard and to do more uh, uh, got more professional. Mm-hmm. So I think that that is a big difference. That is a big, uh, yeah, a big difference. Um is is it is it uh, the same thing that is uh, happening in uh, that that when in K1 is happening now um first you had all the dutch fighters winning you know it 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 was like uh every year in the tournament all the the, the you know the spectators and especially the japanese people were thinking oh, uh a dutch guy is going to win it again uh, now we have Rico. Rico Verhoeven is winning the, uh, you know, every fight that he's getting. He's winning, you know, he has a, I believe, a 19 or 20 uh, fights winning streak right now. Um, do you think it's, it's, you know, are people getting fed up or are people getting uh, fed up with one looking at one champion every time, uh, again and again? Well, I think they will be very happy if he loses. Yeah. Because uh are are we looking for that excitement, you know, because you you he's winning every time. People will people turn away from the TV when he's fighting, you know, uh and and people will think maybe ah he's going to win again so they I'm, will, I'm they gonna will be they will be very happy when he loses. Mm-hmm. Loses. Not because they don't like him, but because it's also nice to see another champion. Yeah. The underdog. The king, is, the king is dead, long live the king. Mm-hmm. Something like that, you know. And uh, and if the fighter always wins, and uh, especially especially in Holland, mm-hmm. I cannot really talk for the other countries, but especially in Holland, in Holland people think like that. They think like, okay, he has won a lot of fights, let somebody else come now. And I can understand that mm-hmm. because if you want to, if you see all the same fighters every time over and over winning again, um, then uh, you don't want to put the TV on. Mm-hmm. You don't want to pay. You don't want to pay <laughs> extra money for for uh, a see fighter. Him. What what is that? Who is going to win anyway? Yeah. And of course, because Rico, I think he's very popular. Popular now. Mm-hmm. Um, so at one hand they want him to win but at the other hand they also want to see um, somebody let, let's say somebody make it very difficult for him to win yeah it's going too and easy apart now. from from Bader who uh, knocked him down one time um, he well, he hasn't been in problem in trouble uh, in the fight twice he knocked him down twice yeah knocked him down twice yeah in collision too um, what will it take to you know uh, to win from Rico? Uh, I don't know. Um, what I, what you see now, for example, what's, what's also very big difference with, with like, let's say, the start of the heavyweights in K1 is uh, Rico is, I think, over 120 kilograms. Yeah. Uh, in those days... Uh, if there was a fighter was, who was 120 g- kilogram, he was fat. Yeah. He was fat. But if you look at Rico, mm-hmm. he is... Uh, 120 with muscles. Yeah, he is... He is, good. he is... Yeah, he is, he is a real a real strong and, and fit fighter. Mm-hmm. And uh, despite the 120 kilogram, he can go for five rounds. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of uh, development uh, has been in the in the sport that makes that uh, nowadays you can do five rounds uh, with 120 be, being fit. Yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah, should apparently the, there's not no solution for that yet. Should the other contenders pay attention 
in what he's doing or change their way of training to get that to that level? I guess so. It's also possible that there are just no good, just no good, uh, good fighters. Mm -hmm. Let's say, uh, let's say, apart from somebody like Butter, uh, but Butter is also also uh, maybe the best fighter. But uh, does he train enough? Mm -hmm. Does he, you know, those kind of things. And uh, and that's what what fighters should look at, like, uh, what do I want to do? Uh, to become a champion. Do you think Butter Hari is capable enough to beat Rico? Physically, uh, technically, for sure. Is he the better fighter? Mm -hmm. Well, on, on paper, of course, let's say, Rico... Let's say, let's, say, let's say, if you ask me, is he the better fighter? If I say in talent, I say yes. Yeah, I agree. He's more talented, mm -hmm. for sure. But that doesn't automatically make it a better fighter yeah hard work pays off hard work pays off yeah that's for sure mm -hmm. the, so so that's always uh, something uh, uh, I don't say he works uh, he doesn't work hard but maybe Rico works hard yeah harder. yeah because sometimes I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the photos of uh, of butter on Instagram he look he looks really fit when he's when when you see the pictures mm -hmm. People ask me, is he fit? Is Butter fit? Then I always say he's Instagram fit, you know, Insta fit. But it, during the fight, you know, you see sometimes that he's he's getting a lot of injuries. But some fighters always train. Yeah. Some fighters uh, will keep up only, that eighty percent level. Only train, only train when they have the fight. And uh, some fighters are always, let's say, train at least three, three, four times a day, mm -hmm. uh, a week. And if they have to fight, they will train uh, maybe 10, 12 times a week. Yeah. You know, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. and, and not, but not everybody can do that. Not everybody has that uh, mentality. Mm -hmm. do, do, you, do you think Butter is, is in that way training? You know, um, you know uh, when, he's, uh, when he's off season, he's not training. When he's on season, he's training. I cannot say. Okay. Uh, but uh, um, I but I think I think I don't know I think that somebody like Rico is more dedicated in his training. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Do you think it becomes uh, it's because of the age? Because he's no, it's, it's because of the it, it, it's how how it's the person. Mm -hmm. That's what I think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I could be wrong. Okay. But, uh, um, I, I, and I, I, if I look at myself, um, I wasn't always training. Uh, I was, if I had didn't had a fight, I wouldn't train uh, just like that. Mm -hmm. But I would train maybe two times, three times a week, yeah. just to stay fit. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, Waiting for a fight sometimes, and sometimes that was frustrating because Months. I had I had a coach uh, trainer uh, uh, who was kind of uh, doing um, uh, negotiations uh, with K1 or something, and then telling me, "Yeah, they are making problem, blah 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 blah," because sometimes I didn't know when I had to fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're making problem, blah, blah, blah. problem with problem that, yeah. Basically, as I learned later, it was. You're like, talking uh, about Johan Foss, right? You're talking about Johan, and uh, later uh, uh, I heard that uh, yeah, he was negotiating for for prices and to 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 get some some extra cut for himself and mm. everything, you know. Double and, contracts. Yeah, especially apart from double contracts, uh, uh, taking a, uh, taking a cut for yourself, and yeah, that was. Uh, Not nice. That was, yeah, it was too bad, and and I know, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure who initiated it. If K1, because K1 was also uh, uh, playing, uh, doing foul play there, mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know who was to blame. But you should, you should uh, think that your coach uh, is close to you, and he should protect you for that. But. Yeah, in my case, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you've you've you're, uh, you've watched 
Glory 77, I believe. What's Glory 77? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Glory 77, the fights uh, where the tournament was, the tournament, Rico, uh, Levi Richters, and all those fights. Um, have you seen it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, have, I must be honest. Uh, uh, you haven't seen all the fights? No, I haven't seen everything. Okay, okay. No. I, I like, of course, I like my sport. I love my sport, but I don't like to watch it all the time because mm. sometimes I'm not interested. For example, if I look at the UFC fights, some of the fights I really think, yes, yeah, I want to see this fight. Mm -hmm. But in Glory, I don't, I don't have that feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, Rico is is a good fighter, but it's not that I'm gonna stay away. It's not that spe spectacular. Not that interesting for me. I don't want to say spectacular, but I, I, I look at interesting, and I don't think it's always that interesting. Mm -hmm. What would interest you to stay up and watch well, the fight? Two fighters. For example, um, when I was allowed to watch Muhammad Ali, yeah, I remember he, was, he had to fight with uh, George Foreman. Yeah, uh, Rumble in the Jungle. Yeah, I saw uh, I, I saw him live before. I saw him fighting with Rudy Lubbers. Mm -hmm. I saw him. I heard the kids at school the next day uh, uh, when he was knocked down by Joe Frazier, uh, but I couldn't see it. My 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 parents didn't allow me. Mm -hmm. But kids on the school they they showed how what he was knocked down. I will never forget that. And then I could watch uh, Rudy Lubbers, I go uh, some, more, some more fights, and then I could watch him fight with George Foreman. Yeah. In, uh, in 74. And, you know, that was very special. And I didn't understand it in the beginning because I didn't know George Foreman. I knew Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Or Cassius Clay. So I saw uh, Foreman attacking, attacking, attacking more than Ali did. Uh, and that at I think seventh or eighth round, mm -hmm. uh, Ali knocked him out. And then at the, and then I really thought, oh, at last, you know, it's it's finally now you can sleep. <laughs> no, it's finally it's finally getting together, you know. And um, of course, later when you realize what's happening, and and I, because I saw that fight many many times mm -hmm. after, I understand it more and more and more. And um, that's uh, basically uh, uh, when you look at the fight. Uh, yeah, you al I always look like, okay, uh, what is he bringing to the table and what is uh, the opponent bringing to the table? And that's what makes, uh, that's what makes uh, a fight interesting. And okay, okay. And let's talk. Uh, we got, I, I, st I still have three more questions. Mm -hmm. um, for you, looking at the future of kickboxing mm -hmm. worldwide, what mm -hmm. do you think about it? I'm not sure. What do you uh, mean? Well, uh, uh, let, let's say f from the moment UFC came, uh, not in not in the beginning, but later on, uh, they they took a lot of. Uh, 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 they took a lot of interest from people who were more interested in kickboxing before. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. And also because in the kickboxing, I mean, we did K1. We were, I mean, when you're a K1 champion, you're a champion. Mm -hmm. But there were so many uh, organizations who had world champions and this and that. and. So it was, I mean, everybody, at, at some point, it's not, not anymore like that, but at some point, everybody was world champion. Yeah. Um, uh, now with 1FC, uh, with Glory, uh, yeah, it's better. It, I, I, it would be nice, it will not happen, but it would be nice if they would unite something or something and make a real champion. Mm -hmm. um, that's not going to happen. Uh, I do think that uh, that kickboxing uh, has an, uh, a solid uh, place in 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 the in the sport, 
but I am not sure uh, how it will develop in mm-hmm. the future. Yeah, because sometimes I've I've said it once in 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 an interview. Um, when we were young, um, there was karate. We were all watching Bruce Lee. We were all mm-hmm. watching the karate, and you know. And at some point, uh, kickboxing took over. Mm-hmm. So we left the karate kid and all that, and we were watching, you were watching kickboxing. kickboxer. Yeah, kickboxer, yeah. yeah. And now, is UFC is going to be the same like the, you know, like kickboxing, taking over everything and leaving the, the same like karate? You know? No, I don't think so. Um, UFC is far more difficult. UFC is kickboxing and judo together. Let me put it like that. Yeah. Um, it is still very difficult for people. Kickboxing is easier yeah. uh, to follow. Uh, UFC is bloodier. Yeah. Uh, UFC uh, people don't uh, women don't like to watch UFC that much no. and even training elbows it's and, and uh, faces all open and you know so I think um, so I, I don't really think that uh, but I do think that like especially men um, they like they to love watch it. more yeah the action you know mm-hmm. in, in in ufc basically you are sure there is action there is basically a hardly no boring fight yeah in ufc mm-hmm. they always go for it mm-hmm. in kickboxing there are a, a lot of a boring lot. fights <laughs> sometimes yeah, yeah yeah um last question do you have any tips for the new generation because sometimes i believe that the new generation is not working that hard as they should be uh, and they are not putting everything aside to to become that champion sometimes i i think they are more instagram champions than you know they are not working as as hard as they are working do you have any tips for them you know to 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 work even harder to do more their best to you know have that dream to to become something in their life life has changed mm-hmm. that's first of all i mean uh, uh things are different now uh, when i was uh, fighting when i was started to fight i could look up to a lot of fighters and a lot of uh, possibilities to fight for myself and everything uh, how is that now i don't mm-hmm. know I mean, especially now, of course, in in COVID period, there are no fights in Holland. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, when will that start again? Will it start this year? I don't know. Mm-hmm. May, I don't think so. Maybe next year. Um, so I think that is that is very difficult for 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 fighters to keep the focus. Uh, uh, for for fighters who think like especially the, the fighters who are getting older mm-hmm. uh, like the who would think like okay my my career is not progressing and nothing's happening um, uh, how will that how will that uh, evolve you know how will that uh, continue mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i i think it's it, that is very difficult i mean if you look at the, the football the soccer uh, yeah they, there is enough money there uh, to uh, to keep the, the the games going, especially for the uh, for the for, for professionals, they still <laughs> do their games. Uh, they still do their thing. But for kickboxing, that's a lot more difficult. Uh, how will that be after COVID? Yeah. Will it will it uh, continue like before, or will something be different? I I really wonder uh, what is going to happen. What is going to happen because. I really don't know, uh, but I do think that uh, things will not be the same. That yeah, that it's it's like now we can. I, I really think that in ten years, 
you will say uh, before and after COVID. Yeah. But and what is your tip? What is your tip for the <coughs> new gen? Um, well, keep on uh, uh, believing in something will happen uh, and uh, hold on mm -hmm. to your training, hold on to to the things you, you like, the things you love. Um, on the other hand, if there's an alternative, you can look for that too. Mm -hmm. I have to be realistic. Yeah, yeah. Ernesto, I want to thank you. Thank you for, for you know, for, for this conversation. Thank mm -hmm. you for uh, attending. Uh, I want to wish you good luck. Good luck on the 8th of May. Uh, you. When you Same when you're you. fighting, <laughs> why do you say that? Uh, yeah, why do you say I'm not fighting? I'm not fighting, Ernesto. My feeling, my feeling is still that you're fighting. No, 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 no. <laughs> you think I'm gonna jump out the box and <laughs> say, "Hey, guys, surprise!" <laughs> well, if you if you bring it like that now, maybe uh, <laughs> something like that will happen. You never, know. you never know. No, 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 no. I'm not fighting. Okay, thank you again. Thank you again. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, Till next time. Bye. -bye.